Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Darlington West Congregation. I welcome all in attendance today, in person and on Zoom. Uh, we have a wonderful program outlined for us today with a nice public discourse, as well as a, a very appropriate Watchtower discussion as well. So to begin our program this morning, uh, if your circumstances allow, you can stand as we sing song number 129. We will, we will keep enduring song 129. So you can stand if you like. So today we have a wonderful discourse prepared for us, how to protect ourselves from Satan's snares. Uh, we have Brother Kaufman that is uh, traveled all the way from Bishopville. So we invite Brother Kaufman up at this time. What do you think? Is Satan a real person? Or is he something that, or does the term Satan simply refer to the evil that is within us, which is also a common thinking today? Well, it's interesting to note that not too many years ago, the American public was asked or, or given a poll, was taken and more than half of the Americans that responded to that poll felt that Satan was not a real being. And that included a number of clergymen. So that was a very surprising. So yes, many people today are confused as to who or what Satan is. But what does God's word, the Bible reveal for us today? Well, let's turn to Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, where it tells about a time when Jesus had an encounter with uh, Satan, and see what we can gather from that. Matthew chapter 8, and if we look at, as we mentioned, verses, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, notice what it says. Again, the devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and do an act of worship to me. Then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, it is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is to him alone you must render sacred service. Then the devil left him. And look, angels came and began ministering to him. Did Jesus have any evil within him to be tempted? No. According to the Bible's record, Satan the devil is a real spirit being that can influence and affect individuals. So Satan has to be real, according to what God's word, the Bible tells us. But now let's turn to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19. We'll learn a little bit more about what Satan's strategy is. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19. It reads, we know that we originate with God, but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. Yes, Satan. Satan has the whole world under his influence and power. He wants people to be confused about whether he even exists or not. After all, if we don't think someone exists, are we going to try to protect ourselves from that individual if he doesn't exist? No. 
the waste of time, isn't it? Satan wants us to feel that way. Or if we're confused, if we're not sure, well, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Any efforts that we might make to try to protect ourselves from his influence would probably only be half-hearted, wouldn't it? We wouldn't put everything we had into protecting ourselves from Satan. And that's what Satan wants. He wants to have people under his influence and under his control. He doesn't want them to put up a defense to avoid his influence. So to start off, let's consider Satan's motives and purpose in what he's trying to do. According to God's word, he was created perfect like everything else that Jehovah God created. So what led to his becoming Satan the devil? Well, let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6 together. And it gives us a clue. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. It says, not a newly converted man, for fear that he might be, get puffed up with pride and fall into the judgment, passed on the devil. So Satan let pride get the best of him, didn't he? He became determined to prove himself superior to Jehovah God, saying that what his ideas, his way of ruling, his way of dealing with humans was better than God's. He told Adam and Eve that. In fact, he told Eve that, didn't he? God trying to get her to feel that she could do whatever she wants and she would be better off. Well, how does that affect us today? Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Just a couple pages over. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. It says, keep your senses, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking to devour someone. So he's determined to get each one of us to follow along with his thinking, to look to him for direction rather than looking to Jehovah God. As we read earlier, Satan already has the whole world already under his influence, so his full anger and attention is turned to people that are trying to serve Jehovah God, just like we are here in this room today. In some cases, Satan uses a frontal approach, persecution, outright persecution, to try to stop people, to try to stop God's people from serving God and cowering and giving in and doing what the devil wants. We're familiar with some areas like that. We know of our brothers and sisters that are facing some of those types of situations in direct persecution. But in many other areas, Satan uses or found it more effective to use a more indirect approach, a more subtle approach, by using snares that can entrap individuals when they're least expecting it. So let's take a look at our first picture now. We'll take a look at a snare, a trap that is commonly used. And if you look at the picture there, you can see the it's a simple snare. Maybe you've got a rabbit or something that's trying to eat your garden, eating some of your vegetables out in the backyard. You want to catch it and take it over to your neighbor's house, right? No, you want to get rid of it, move it away from that won't do any damage to your vegetables. But let's take a look at another trap. Is that the type of trap that Satan's using? or a snare. Let's go to our next picture. We're talking about the snares that Satan uses today. If you look at that, you can see that that type of snare that he's using, it's not just designed to catch us and then move us over to another safe area. His traps, his snares are designed to do serious physical harm to us, uh, in spiritual harm, even causing death in many cases, if we are caught in one of his traps. We can take our picture down now, thank you. So for the next part of our discussion, we're gonna identify a number of snares that Satan does use, many times if very effectively uh, against people today, trying to get us to give up our worship or our, lose our relationship with Jehovah God, 
and causes serious spiritual harm or spiritual death by breaking our loyalty to Jehovah God. And as we go through some of these eight things that we're going to be talking about, some of the snares that he uses, you may realize that this may include snares that we thought we had dealt with before, that we thought we'd overcome successfully. But then at the wrong time, Satan can throw that same snare right back in our way, and we have to deal with it all over again. In these critical last days, Satan, of course, misleads many people by what is described at 2 Timothy chapter 3. So let's take a look at that. It's one of the snares that he uses very effectively today. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll read the first verse, and we'll also take a look at uh, the, uh, the second half of verse 4. So 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, critical times hard to deal with will be here. And now notice some of the things that Satan is using, and it would be very prevalent today. The latter part of verse 4, people would be lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. So Satan often uses the love of pleasure um, during these critical times to trap people, to distract them, to get them so devoted or focused on pleasures that they forget about their spiritual relationship, the things that are most important in life of worshiping Jehovah God. People used to live for the weekend. You're familiar with that expression? Of course, it's kind of changed somewhat. Of course, with COVID and so on, people couldn't go out and do as many things as they once liked to. And we're still somewhat under some restrictions and some restraints due to that. Today, many people, of course, are focused on what they can buy online, what they can um, do, and so on. So we've been taken in by Satan. If we find that these same things are beginning to interfere with our personal study, our meeting attendance, or our regular participation in the field ministry. And of course, that's what Satan wants us to do, to get distracted and turn away or forget these other things, the more important things. Another snare that Satan very effectively uses is the same thing that caused his downfall. Remember a few minutes ago, we identified what his motive was, that he appeals to pride. He saw how effective pride can be, how he even got the perfect woman Eve to want to be like God, knowing good and, and bad. The Bible record also tells us how Cain and Nimrod, among others, became ensnared with pride. And today, uh, Satan still uses pride of race, pride of nationality, pride of education or background to try to uh, divide people uh, from their united worship of Jehovah God. And since we're surrounded by people's prideful attitudes every day, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, in our neighborhood, the community, whatever it is, since we're surrounded by it, it's easy, if we're not careful, to slip, let it to slip into our dealings with our brothers and sisters within the congregation if we're not careful. Well, let's look at another uh, snare that Satan uses. Let's go to... Uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2. And again, it's a snare that Satan has found extremely successful, so successful that even many other angels have been, have been seduced by uh, this snare. Genesis 6, 2 reads, the sons of the true God began to notice that the daughters of men were beautiful, so they began taking as wives all whom they chose. So Satan uses the power of sexual attraction as well to uh, lure individuals into a snare, which can ruin them and kill them spiritually. The world's uh, commercial advertisements, the entertainment industry, all under Satan's control also serves his purpose when it comes to that sexual attraction, building that up. Of those disfellowshipped each year from the Christian congregation, 
the majority are because of sexual immorality. They fall into Satan's snare. Some of the other snares that Satan uses today, tobacco and drug addiction, they're unclean snares too that many find once they get addicted to these things, they find it very difficult to break free from that snare. Satan also uses false religion as a snare. He uses that to turn people away from serving Jehovah God. He dangles this carrot, you might say, in front of them, saying that we know, I know that you are built or created with a need to worship God. So here's something that will appease you. That's what he's saying. False religion, of course, is designed to kind of think and trick people into feeling that they're having their spiritual needs satisfied, a worship of God. And yet it's actually because it's false, it's turning them away from Jehovah God, the true God. Another snare that Satan often uses is occultism and curiosity about it. If we try to find a movie, try to find a book to read, a television show, isn't it harder and harder to find something that's not featuring spiritism, uh, uh, something to do with demonism, all these things that uh, are fascinated people, the world in general is fascinated with. Satan uses that also as a snare to turn people away from Jehovah God. It also mentions that it's another snare is the use of apostates that Satan can use. These capitalize on minor matters and personal grievances, and then they try to discourage others from serving Jehovah God. So a snare, another snare that we need to be unaware of. And then the final snare that we're going to identify is fear of man, which is another one of Satan's snares, which can cause us to lose our courage for doing what is right. This can include, include our fear of what other humans may do to us when we face outright persecution, as well as our fear of what our unbelieving neighbors or relatives or workmates might think of us or how they might treat us if they see us going to meetings or sharing the good news with them. So again, Satan uses that fear of man to cause us to hold back from serving Jehovah whole souled. Well, there we've identified a number of things that Satan is using today to ensnare people, to entrap people, to kill their spirituality, their spiritual lives and relationship with Jehovah God. So now that we know some of the things that to be aware of, what can protect us? What can help us to stand strong and remain, avoiding that trap that we saw earlier that Satan is using? Well, we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. We're going to ask and, and read a couple of scriptures that will really help us to appreciate what we can do to keep ourselves strong. But as we think about protecting ourselves from Satan's snares today, couple of things that we have to keep in mind. First of all, we need to recognize that we do need protection from this deceiver, from Satan the devil. We can't stand firm in our own strength because Satan does have much more power, wider knowledge, and experience in ensnaring people. He's had thousands of years of experience and practice in trapping people and ensnaring them. We don't have that much experience in avoiding it, do we? So we need help to withstand Satan's snares. And second of all, we need to realize that it's an ongoing battle to avoid his snares. It's not just something that we deal with one time in our life as a Christian. Once we've passed it, we're, we're good to go, you might say. It's an ongoing battle to avoid these snares. But thank you. Thankfully, Jehovah God has provided us with everything that we need in order to protect ourselves from Satan's snares. So let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6 now. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to take a look at verse 11. 
first of all. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Notice what it says. It says, put on the complete suit of armor from God so that you may be able to stand firm against the crafty acts of the devil. Did you notice the word complete? Suit of armor, it uses the word complete. When you think about complete, it indicates that Jehovah gives us everything that we need. It's complete. Nothing's missing. From Jehovah's standpoint, he gives us everything if we take advantage of it. But second of all, we also appreciate when it says complete, that if we're putting on that spiritual armor, we have to put everything on. We can't leave out something that Jehovah has provided us and expect to be protected. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more in uh, a little bit later in our discussion. So we need to take advantage of everything that Jehovah provides for us. So let's bring up our third picture now of our spiritual armor. And as we look at this picture, we're going to read the description from God's Word, the Bible, uh, a couple of verses later now. It's it's Ephesians chapter 6. This time we're going to read verses 14 through 17 which talks about this complete suit of armor, and then we'll identify what each piece represents and how it can protect us. So verses 14 through 17, it reads, Stand firm, therefore, with the belt of truth fastened around your waist, wearing the breastplate of righteousness, and having your feet shod in readiness to declare the good news of peace. Besides all of this, take up the large shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the wicked ones' burning arrows. Also accept the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, that is God's word. So there we have that complete description of everything that we need to protect ourselves from Satan's snares. So what did we talk about in this description? What did they picture? You notice that one of the first things that was mentioned, it talked about the belt of truth that's around our waist. Belt of truth protects us from false teachings and the harm that false teachings can cause. In fact, religious lies such as God being a trinity or the theory of evolution have been one of Satan's uh, most effective weapons in keeping persons from getting to know the true God. So study and prove to yourself the truthfulness of God's word and be convinced of that. Also notice that it mentioned about the breastplate of righteousness. Well, the breastplate of righteousness, but the breastplates in ancient times on the warrior, the soldier, is a very heavy piece of equipment, wasn't it? But it was very essential. Why? What was it protecting? It's protecting the heart, isn't it? protecting a very vital organ, our heart. Jesus often warned against our hearts becoming weighed down so that we don't put kingdom interests first in our lives. So how can we keep our heart from following, see, um, firm for following Jehovah's righteous standards? One brother in his early 20s whose heart began to be pulled away from, or, and pulled toward leading a double life following the world's standards said, eventually, Actually, I saw the benefits of living by Jehovah's standards. Some of my former friends began taking drugs. Others dropped out of school. It was simply sad to see how their lives turned out. Jehovah really protects us. So again, we need to keep our heart protected and focused on spiritual things. Something else that was mentioned in that complete suit of armor was our feet that was shod in readiness to declare the good news of peace. So keep busy in the ministry. This will help us to protect ourselves from Satan's snares as well. And when sharing in the ministry, remember that we're declaring the good news of peace. So be patient, tactful in the ministry, overcoming any opposition that Satan might try to stir up. Then it talked about, and we can see it in our illustration, that large seal of faith. 
if you've seen warriors in different movies and pictures and so on, you see that this, the um, armor, I'm sorry, that the shields came all different sizes. Some were very small, but here we're told to take a large shield of faith. We need to make our faith as large and as strong as we can. The size of our faith really depends upon us. So work at making our uh, shield as large as possible by our Bible studying and meditation, associating with our fellow brothers and sisters. All of that can help make our large, our, our, feet, uh, our shield of faith large and strong. And if we have that large shield, we're going to be able, as the verse indicates, we'll be able to extinguish all of the missiles that Satan is constantly hurling at us, which could include ridicule, could include slander, bitter words, sarcasm, falsehood. All these things would be quenched and protected and stopped by that large shield of faith. It also mentioned the helmet of salvation. And you notice what it said about that helmet of salvation? It says that we have to accept it. We're not born with that helmet of salvation, but we have to read and think about the wonderful promises that Jehovah has in store for us, for all right-hearted individuals who love him. Become convinced that Jehovah's promises are real and that they are right around the corner. Yes, our hope of salvation is just like that protective headgear. And then finally, it talks about the sword of the Spirit, that is God's Word, the Bible. This is our one piece of offensive armor. So we need to become well acquainted with God's Word, being able to use it effectively to expose Satan's crafty acts, his false teachings, Use God's word on every opportunity that we can, both when sharing formally in the preaching work as well as informally. We can take our picture down now. Thank you very much. Along with that, all of this spiritual armor, the verses go on in verse 18 to help us to see that there's one more thing that can go along with that in helping us to avoid and stay strong from Satan's snares. So if we look at verse 18, it says, while with every form of prayer and supplication, you carry on prayer in ev on every occasion in spirit. And to that end, stay awake, constantly making supplication in behalf of all the holy ones. So prayer also is a very effective aid in protecting ourselves from Satan's snares. Now let's take a brief look at a soldier in a battle situation. If we take a look at our fourth picture. Now, if you found yourself uh, being attacked, figuratively attacked by Satan, just like that picture, and certainly we can put ourselves in that picture each and every day. Whenever we leave the house, we're under attack from Satan. So if you think about that soldier there, what piece of armor do you think would be he considered to be less important when he's out there in the middle of that battle? Something that maybe he could leave home for the day. What happens if he was uh, getting fully dressed and prepared for battle and he was running out of time? Do you think he'd worry about putting on his sandals? Nobody's going to be shooting arrows at my sandals. I'll be okay. My feet will be, be all right. I've got the, the, the sword, I've got the shield. Could he leave that at home? Could he leave his sandals at home? Then when he gets out there in battle, what's he doing? He's looking at the sharp rocks that he might step on. He might not even see the enemy coming at him and lose his life because of that. So he needs to have every piece of armor on just like we do today. Along with the spiritual armor, which protects us from the outside, we need to protect ourselves also from the inside. We can take our picture down now. Thank you very much. Well, how can we do that? Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, it speaks of and identifies the works of the flesh that are common and that we all feel. 
If you recall now in verses 22 and 23, it then talks about the fruitage of God's spirit. Yes, the fruitage of God's spirit is also a strong defense against protecting ourselves against Satan's snares. So how can these different fruits of the spirit protect us? Well, think about some of those fruits of the spirit that we're familiar with. We're familiar with love, the first one. Love for Jehovah and our fellow believers allows no room for the works of the flesh to grow in us and allow a place for Satan to take hold of. Talked about mildness, mitigating anger, makes us makes anger less severe by helping to calm down the angry person, helps prevent strife or friction to develop between two individuals, including two within the congregation. So again, if we allowed uh, anger to build up in us, Satan would have a place to uh, set his trap. Talked about self-control as well, helping us to avoid the works of the flesh. So we need to feed our mind on good things, leaving no room for bad thinking. Well, now remember the picture of that deadly snare that we saw in the beginning of our discussion. Yes, the eight snares that we identified Satan is using very effective today are even more deadly than what we saw, that deadly trap that is Satan uses. Why? Because these traps that Satan is using are designed to cause us spiritual death, aren't they? They're designed to ruin our relationship with Jehovah God. We can't have that, allow that to happen. But with Jehovah's help, we can protect ourselves, friends. Think about the rewards that we can enjoy if we make the effort to protect ourselves at every opportunity, on every occasion. First of all, we'll have a good conscience because of our right conduct. Second of all, we will provide Jehovah God with an answer to his taunter, Satan the devil. Satan has taunted Jehovah God that there's no humans that will ever, who will endeavor to remain loyal to you. But if we endeavor to remain faithful to Jehovah God, despite all the snares that Satan puts before us, we're giving Jehovah an answer to Satan's challenge. Third benefit from making the effort to protect ourselves is that we keep our integrity, and that also encourages others to be faithful around us. Mutual interchange of encouragement. If we see our brothers and sisters, even our brothers and sisters that we read about um, on our website and so on, who are remaining faithful under direct persecution and opposition, all of that serves to strengthen us as well. And finally, if we remain faithful in avoiding the snares from Satan, we will enjoy eternal life in Jehovah's new system of things, which is right around the corner. So let's turn now to our final scripture at Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. And read that together. Matthew 24 and verse 13. And notice what it says. It says, but the one who has endured to the end will be saved. Such rewards can be ours only if we keep up our guard every day and protect ourselves from the snares which Satan continues to put in front of us each and every day in our daily lives. So friends, may each one of us here be determined to do everything that we can to protect ourselves from Satan's snares and encourage our brothers and sisters to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kaufman, for that very encouraging discourse. Thank you for reminding us and helping us to appreciate from the Bible that Satan is real and also examining the snares that he uses to entrap uh, servants of Jehovah. So we really appreciate it. And thank you and your wife for uh, traveling as well to our uh, West Darlington today.
So we have two announcements. Um, well, one announcement is right after the meeting at 12 o'clock, we'll meet in the back and on, the, on Zoom for those that want to go out in the ministry. And the other one is, uh, of course, we've had a lot of death and uh, sickness in our congregation over the past four or five weeks. So continue to do what you, you've been doing. Your friends are so loving, kind, hospitable. Continue to encourage and visit these ones. Uh, we don't want to forget about them. Brother Lai, uh, Sister Ham, um, and see, I'm forgetting about them right up on the stage right now. But one of the ones that we wanted to make mention of is Sister Humes. Uh, so we just, um, she just lost her grandmother and now her father is really sick. So give her the support that she needs at this time. Your friends are very loving and kind and uh, uh, you've always done that. And so continue to keep up that good work. 